Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. Um, the agenda was has been posted publicly and we are here. The first item on the agenda uh, is to hold a public hearing for revised animal regulations. Um, I figure what I would do is um, I can read this, I can read the public notice. Um, maybe Pam, if you would summarize why we did this just succinctly and then I can go through the proposed changes. Um, um, Michael, first of all, we just have to say we're going to open the public public hearing. So we're going to open the public hearing um, portion of this uh, public health meeting um, to to discuss the revision of Cohasset rules and regulations governing horses, stables, cloven hoofed livestock, fowl, and poultry. Um, the following notice was published in the Patriot Ledger on April fourteenth, twenty twenty three, and this is this meeting is pursuant to that notice. Uh, the Cohasset Board of Public Health will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 at 6 p.m. virtually via Zoom webinar to review and vote on proposed changes to rules and regulations governing horses, stables, uh, cloven hooved livestock, fowl, and poultry. The revised regulations will reduce the existing septic system setback requirement. The proposed revised regulations and proposed changes are available for review on the Board of Public Health page on the town's website. The public's welcome to attend the Zoom hearing using log information available on the agenda that, that was posted on the Town of Cohasset website um, or submit writing uh, input in writing by emailing Pam Fahey at cohassetma.org prior to the hearing um, uh, signed by the Cohasset Board of Public Health. So do you want, can you just summarize why this was done and then I can go through the changes. Right, um, one of the main reasons why was because the Board of Health is completely gone um, online in terms of permitting. So the permitting software we use is called Permit Eyes and it's made for animals to have one permit. And so our regulations were written for a separate permit for the keeping of animals and a separate permit for um, having a stable permit. And when you look around like at the state template on animal regulations it really only calls for one permit and when i looked at other towns with animal regulations not a lot of towns actually have them but our neighboring towns of hingham and hanover have them the town of concord has them everybody including the template only has one permit we, we were the only ones that broke it out into two permits so for the convenience of being able to use our software we just combined it all into one and it was it was very very re redundant whatever the requirements were for the keeping of animals it was the same requirements for the stable so it, it just made more sense to to combine it into one permit and then the, the second thing was that um, we were running into problems with some people that were applying because of the distance to set back to a septic system which in itself is not a reason to change except for the fact that it was very unclear why you would even have a hundred foot setback to a septic system. It didn't really make sense. It seemed like the one thing you would want to do is physically protect your system and not have something placed on it. But in terms of setbacks for the protection of contamination, it really didn't make any sense. So we, we made that change. Okay. Those are the two main reasons. Okay, terrific. So I am going to share the screen. I'm going to basically read through the summary of the changes. And again, these were posted on the um, Board of Public Health website. Um, so these, uh, as Pam just mentioned, the proposed changes will simplify the application process um, and resulting in one permit for keeping animals in stable uh, rather than two permits and reduce the setback requirements to septic systems. So if you look through the, the changes, um, you uh, so a few years ago, the town, a town meeting, we renamed the Board of Health to the Board of Public Health. And so that's been updated throughout the document. Uh, nuisances on page three were further defined to include unsanitary conditions or odors or noise that disturb abutters. Uh, permit eyes is what Pam was just describing, which is a permitting system. Uh, it was added throughout the document to replace each reference to an application form approved by the board. So this is the for the process for applying for an animal permit. So it brought that up to date. Um, sections D and E were the where the merging of the um, 
the requirements for one permit for keeping of animals in a stable. Um, and section E was eliminated, uh, i.e. removing the, the permit for a stable. That's on pages five to seven. Um, the setback requirements for a facility, which in, includes a barn, stable, or corral, to a septic soil absorption system or any component of a septic system were reduced from 100 feet to 50 feet um, to a distance of 10 feet, and primarily for the purpose of physically protecting a septic system, and that is on page 8. Um, we added penalties and fines under enforcement on page 10, and then under variances, um, we eliminated the cohesive mar mariner of the publication for advertising a variant request. Um, just on, uh, the cohesive mariner doesn't, you know, exist anymore. <laughs> so, um, so that is a summary of the changes. Um, I would like to. This was discussed at a, a board of public health meeting, the last board of health board of public health meeting. Um, I don't know if there are further questions or comments from the Board of Public Health before we open it up for public comment. Elizabeth or Robin, anything you'd like to add? I, was, I wasn't sure that we were going to reduce the uh, setback requirements to a, to a number different than what, what's universally uh, in in a normal situation did we decide that yeah we did we talked about it from the perspective of um you know having a setback requirement for a barn to a septic system it didn't really make a whole lot of sense um the only reason you would need such a setback would be to prevent um you know damage to the system and so you can accomplish that with a 10 foot um a 10 foot um setback um, and I think, Pam, you also mentioned that, uh, so other towns in terms of their requirements, were we comparing to those also? Yeah, and other towns don't even have a mention of a septic system. It's not even included, in, including the state's template, they don't even mention. So we were already being extremely conservative to even mention setbacks to a septic system. And so now we've just kind of made it a little bit more reasonable. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Robin. Um, so let's open this up for public comment. Any questions or uh, points of discussion you'd like to make? And if you would like to, please make yourself known and state your name and street address, please. I'm going to unshare this so we can see people. Is there anyone who would like to ask questions or comment? Lots of public interest in this uh, this agenda item. Um, okay, so at this point, we will um, vote to approve the new regulations effective today. Um, I am gonna get the motions up here. I'll second that. Um, I'm gonna read the motion first, and then <laughs> where are we? Just trying to get the file to open. Oh, so the, 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 the motion here is simply to vote to accept the new regulations effective this date. I move to um, approve these regulations effective today, March, May 2nd, 2023. Second. Okay. All in favor of Aye. acceptance? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries three, nothing. That closes the public hearing portion of the public health meeting tonight. Thank you, everyone. Um, we have five minutes before the next uh, scheduled agenda item, so we should probably, uh, we can skip ahead to these other items. Um, we can uh, approve the minutes from the March 29th Board of Public Health meeting. I reviewed them and they look accurate to me. Elizabeth or Robin, any comments or motion? The move we approve the minutes from the yeah. previous meeting. Elizabeth, can I get a second? A second? Thank you. A second? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries three nothing. Uh, next meeting date. Two thirds of the Board of Public Health will not be here for the next meeting date. So Elizabeth, what date will work for you? Okay. I'm just pulling up my calendar here. Um, so if we go out, do we have any uh, agenda items scheduled for the next? Yeah, I was gonna just hype in with that. Um, there is a septic system that um, they're looking for like a closure date before the end of May. And so I asked them if they could meet. Um, and I'm going to grab my own calendar, like the third, third Tuesday in May. Let me see what that is. <laughs> um, Tuesday the 23rd. Does that work for you, Elizabeth? Works for me. Wait a minute. Okay. This is this is still May. This is May. Yeah. So I don't think I think Robin and I are still on the board then. So we should probably. You are. I think it. Oh. I think isn't it June 1st? Isn't that the date? Um, I, I'm off as soon as the election occurs. I'm off. I think the election's like the 14th or something. Oh, okay. 13th. Okay. Like election's the 13th. As We'd a, love to keep you, but. <laughs> as you, Michael, you as well, you, you, yep. you're you on until through the 13th when okay. the new the board is approved. So. so it seems like Pam and Elizabeth have decided on. Tuesday, May 23rd. That's at the same time? At six o'clock, yep. Move around. My office has decided that there's nobody here, so I need to turn the lights back on. Here we go. Okay, very good. Um, um, let's see. So, public health director report. Pam, would you like to add anything to your um, your weekly summaries that you've been providing so religiously? Let me just think. Like, what's a hot topic right now? Um, I'm working on a housing issue up in the preserve, but somebody's got squirrels in their ceiling and there's a bit of conflict there. So I'm up at this preserve a couple of times. And also another conflict at 132 Chief Justice Cushing Highway where um, there's getting to be backups in the Social Athletic Center and the landlord is trying to place blame on the tenant, Social Athletic Center, when really, in reality, you can't assign pipes to different tenants and decide that this pipe is your problem versus somebody else's problem. It really is all one big facility. So um, I've written a letter and I've just had the, um, the town's plumbing inspector review it today and he added, added some language to support it. And we looked at a plan together and he supports what I've written. So I'm gonna be sending that out this week on behalf of the board to try to um, try to get them to, to do something permanent, to permanently maintain on a monthly schedule so they don't have backups. It's you know definitely health violation to have backup into a, a gym. So those are my two big ongoing things right now. Okay. Thank you. And we will enter your report into the minutes per usual, your uh, your weekly reports into the minutes. Um, thank you, Pam. Okay, so 615. So up next is the um, 754 CJC septic uh, design. Um, the septic upgrade, IA technology, Presby and Viroseptic. Um, um, and so we're looking for Edward Watley, who I see in the middle of my screen there. Could you introduce yourself and take us through the plan? And I'm happy to share the plan if it's useful. I can put it up on the screen. Um, sure. Um, I've, I've got one kind of colored up if if I can, but if I can't, that's okay too. Well, see if you can share it. If you can share it, that'd be great. Yeah, it looks like I can. Um, so yeah, um, my name is Ed Watley. I'm a civil engineer uh, working for... Um, Right, Pierce, um, and um, uh, in September um, there was a uh, uh, a septic system inspection at, at the property, 
and um, it, it failed. Um, the leaching field was, was just not draining. And the reason for the inspection was the, that there was a, uh, uh, on, ongoing, there's the, the build out of one of the, the smaller spaces in the building to, to uh, open up a, a butcher shop. And so at that point, um, we uh, kind of began, began the, the painful process of unpeeling the onion there. Uh, we think the, the system may have been built in the, in the 1960s um, and there were no records. And so, um, you know, um, uh, it, the, the journey has been interesting, um, but, you know, in, in the end, um, I think we have a really good plan. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and share a screen and kind of walk you through the components. Okay. So let me know if this is visible. Yep. Okay. Um, so um, the existing um, conditions are shown uh, in the I've highlighted some of the tanks, um, but there's basically, there's a small pump station that was installed um, probably in the 2000s. Um, and that pumps over to a septic tank. And then the main flow from the building um, comes in uh, from, uh, from this side and that goes into the septic tank as well. Um, that's a, a, a one compartment tank, um, not meeting Title V in terms of of the, you know, having a, uh, uh, the, the 48 and the 24 hour. So um, that goes into a, a D box and this is what was flooded during the inspection. And, um, and so we had one day of, of just pumping and taking measurements and, um, and trying to figure out if there was, you know, any possibility of trying to renovate these, these lines in here. And um, and you know even um, did some some jetting not not jetting actually some TV inspection of the lines and found out that we couldn't get very far down um, and so you know these are are you know essentially just question marks here so um, given that there were no records um, we we went down the road of uh, getting uh, a real survey so that we could. Um, properly lay out a, a system. And then we went through and did two days of, uh, of soil evaluations with Phil Spath. And, uh, and we, um, we actually um, had six test pits. We, were, uh, we did a, a few back here in the existing system. We ended up doing three. And then we were also looking at, at, at um, a couple areas in front on either side of uh, electric and uh, telephone lines um, to see if there was some way we could, we could site a new system outside uh, the, the wetland buffers. And uh, we, we ran into problems um, with, you know, basically lousy soil in test pit three, very, very gooey. Uh, and then uh, shallow soils in test pit four and test pit five, not, not enough to do anything with. So, um, so we, we dropped back and on the last day we did one test pit here uh, near the building to see if we couldn't um, replicate um, uh, somewhat the, the conditions in, in test pit two. And we found um, that there was enough uh, uh, naturally occurring material, enough separation of groundwater to be able to just get a system in. And so um, the new system is um, is going to uh, include a uh, a septic tank for the the uh, forty eight hours. Another uh, that's a twenty five hundred gallon septic tank. Another twenty five hundred gallon septic tank with the. Uh, 24 hours in the first chamber and then a divider. And in the second chamber, that would be the clarified effluent that would be sent out to the disposal field. And then we're gonna upgrade this um, small pump station out front to uh, replace the, the one uh, sort of home deep wish uh, uh, pump with, with two, two pumps with multiple floats. 
uh, and then an alarm light. And then that'll get um, this, this force main is in place and then we'll tie into that and install a grease trap. Um, that takes flow from uh, the, new, the new butcher. Uh, and then, uh, so that'll, uh, we'll head to the, to the front end of the first septic tank. And then um, at the D box, uh, we'll be feeding uh, a, a Presby system, um, which um, Pam, have you all done a number of them? We, we have done Presby's and okay. so the, the uh, benefit good. is that you are allowed to reduce the size of your SDA. Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, the size reduction was, was, was critical. Um, so we're, we're, you know, well within the 25 foot buffer of wetlands. So um, after this meeting, depending on, you know, um, the, you know, the outcome of the meeting and potential comments on the plan, uh, my plan was to go ahead and wrap up the submission to the CONCOM and get that in by the end of the week. And then that'll go to uh, the public hearing for that will be, uh, I think somewhere around the end of the month, maybe the 27th. And then uh, at, at that point, then, you know, we should be, uh, you know, uh, free and clear. Uh, and so um, does that, um, uh, are folks clear enough on the plan? Well, one thing I'm just going to mention too. So it's kind of hard to see in this, but you get to understand there's this outline of the building, right? And so on the left hand side there's no room whatsoever you hit a, a, the property line with the other property and as ed explained to the front you can't put it in the front it's really shallow to you know refusal to bedrock um in the back on the left hand like the top side or the, the left hand side there's drainage so if you can kind of picture shaws is across the street from these guys and it slopes down and there's like a drainage pipe that goes along that left-hand side and there's a drain in that back corner. So you can't really put anything in that back corner either. So literally the only place to put the system is back in the exact same spot where the existing one is. That really is like, it's so limited that it's really the only place you could put it. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a couple questions or? Sure. So, you know, the set, it's, it's the previous design, the system was outside of that setback, right? Um, this is the I, same spot. It's yeah, the it's same spot, much. but but look at the, if you look at the original plan, the original system, where did the, where did the system actually end? So um, I, it probably went all the way out to that that hatched area where it says saw cut. Right. It's just that when when we TV'd this with Rosano, uh, you know, they got a little ways down the pipe and then and then they couldn't get any further. Right. Um, and and so you know, I I added the question marks here just because I don't know. If you think it would help our case, would it make sense to extend these lines out and and just continue to just Put the question marks in the line type. I mean, um, it, it's I no I don't I don't I don't think that's necessary. I think I'm just wondering if the original design plans, not as you had found them, but the original installed plans, if they extended down that far. I'm just trying to like ascertain because we're talking about you know the you know being within this within the um, the wetland there is like well if the original system which was in failure was in the wetland. And here's a new system. It's not extending any further into the wetland than the originals. It's that's just good information to know. Our, our file, Michael, is literally empty. There's nothing. The system was so old, like in 1960, that there's there's nothing. Yeah, I, I you know we we did in this um, last test bit here. Um, we did break into a tile, a clay tile, and so my my thoughts on this are it was just kind of put in to get rid of the nuisance you know clay tiles you know in in the you know in, in the soil and call it a day um not not a whole lot of thought probably went into it so probably a good 25 years before the title five regulations even came out so you can imagine 
what it was. Wild West. Okay, that's great. It's amazing that it lasted this long. <laughs> it's good value. Um, so, did you do you want to walk through the the, up, the upgrade request? We we I, we have a list of the upgrade upgrade requests. Have you talked about all of them? Okay, so um, yeah, I've got them front and center here. So the first three are 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 setbacks related to uh, building and property line. Um, not not a whole lot uh, we could do there. Um, and then the fourth one is um, a. Uh, uh, is by using the, the IA system to allow the, the minimum depth of naturally occurring material to be reduced to two feet. And then the fifth one is what we'll be going to the CONCOM with to request, uh, you know, the, the approval to install the system within uh, the, the 50 foot buffer, uh, actually the 25, a little bit of it. And then um, due to the, uh, the location of groundwater, we were required to use the alternative uh, uh, sieve analysis um, to, to get the, the, the perk rate. And so we had that done at, at breaks. Uh, and then uh, using the, you know, the Presby system um, to, uh, to be able to take advantage of, of the 40% uh, reduction in, in the charge uh, area. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Uh, that number seven though, um, we normally we just take that as a, a credit for using the, the Presby, like it, it's something you normally don't vote on. It's just like kind of an accepted given. So when you guys vote, you'll be the, the, the first six plus then the, the plan, approval of the plan itself. Great, okay. Um, Robin, Elizabeth, questions? No, we're just, are we ready to um, move on the local upgrade approvals? Okay, um, Elizabeth, do you have any questions? Anything you wanted to ask about? Sure, no, just my only question was what, what, alter, what alternative is there to this, this system? Or is there, it would be like shut down the building, there is no alternative or install sewer. Um, yeah, the sewer, um, from what I understand, it is not available and probably yeah. won't be in our, you know, time frame. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are um, uh, tenants in the building that I think are providing a lot of, lot of value um, mm -hmm. to, to residents. Um, and um, so, you know, but yeah, I mean, I, I think we threaded the needle of, on this and, and got something in that will, um, you know, it is going to treat um, to the level that the DEP intended. Good, thank you. Okay, so Robin, do you want to launch into the litany of um, motions? For this we'll do the local upgrade approval requests. Uh, first one, 310 CMR 15.211 septic, septic tank setback from slab foundation, 10 feet required, 2.6 feet requested. Do we hear a second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two, mm -hmm. 310 CMR 15.405A SAS setback from property line, 10 feet required, 5.4 feet requested. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 3 0. Number three, 310 CMR 15.405B SAS setback to slab foundation. 10 feet required, 5.9 feet requested. I will second that one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, three nothing. Number four, 310 CMR 15404 3C, minimum depth of naturally occurring pervious soil, 
below the entire area. Um, how many feet are required? I, that's, I, blocked out, I blocked out of that. I don't see the... Uh, four. Four required, two feet requested. I'll second that one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Do, do we do the do we do this as this goes to Concom number five? Yeah, you still need to do it. Three ten CMR fifteen point four oh five E SAS setback from border of registration wetlands fifty feet required twenty four feet requested. I I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries three nothing. Number six, 310 CMR 15.405 L, I guess it is, to allow civil analysis to be used as an alternative to perp testing. I second that one. All in favor? Uh, All right. Aye. And motion the carries last three, three alternative soil absorption system technology to obtain a 40% reduction in SAS area. Uh, so that one we don't have to vote on. So now we just need the approval, the motion to approve the entire design. Which is, um, let's see, I, I don't, I don't see the information here. I can, I can do that. I can do that. Okay. You want to do that then? Go ahead. Okay. I make a motion to approve the steps design plan titled "Existing Site Vision Site Plan and General Notes" for 475 Chief Justice Cushing Way, Route 3A, Cohasset, Massachusetts, dated March 3rd, 2023. Second that. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries three nothing. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and so, um, Pam, I'm sure I'll be talking to you. Um, we'll, you know, try to get through the fifth concom, and then, um, and then, uh, you know, looking at at uh, you know, sort of we're we're looking ahead to schedule. Um, I do. Um, the owners are going to have to finance this, um, so I've already given them a, a, a fairly conservative cost estimate. So that's that's sort of next in the wings is, is to try to line that up. Not not enough money in the bank for this. Uh, it's a it's a big project, um, but anyway, um, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, if you could just unshare your screen. Terrific. Yes. All right. Take care. Thank you. Um, okay, we're running a little late, but um, 625 p.m. 74 Forest Avenue animal permit um, and Morse Engineering presenting. Who have we from Morse Engineering? All right, thank you, uh, Jeff Asset here, civil engineer. Um, also, uh, the property owner, Chris Condrat, is on the call. Hello. All right, so I'll share the plan. All right, so we're we're here seeking a permit to keep two horses at their property at 74 Forest Ave. Um, this is their property. It, it's a retreat lot. It's about 5.5 acres in size. And it's abutted by residential properties. Um, Forest Ave is here. So it's abutted by residential property, properties to the east. Um, this property is owned by the Cohasset Conservation Trust and then other um, undeveloped land to, uh, to the north and to the west. Um, so the, the proposed location to, for their horses is in this area, this back right corner of their lawn. Um, we did get two letters in, from abutters on this project. Uh, one abutter is from Mr. Pompeo, who owns the land immediately next door. And the other uh, letter was from an abutter located here at 29 Cedar Street, who has some concerns, which I do feel we address their, address their concerns in the site plan, as well as the uh, management plan, which I'll go into a little more detail on. So the proposed um, work, again, is going in this corner of the lawn, and the site plan shows some more detail on that location. Uh, the driveway comes from Forest Ave here. The home sits here. This is an existing lawn area with a soccer net. And they're proposing a small 24 by 36 barn 
as well as a corral area. And um, we're seeking two waivers. The, um, the first waiver is a reduction in the setback to a wetland. Um, your, requires, your regulations require a 100 foot setback to the wetland, and we're asking permission to hold a 50 foot buffer. Um, our justification for that is that we will be filing with conservation and we are respecting conservation's 50 foot notice to buffer. And we're also providing a six inch berm along the edge of the corral in that direction of the wetland, which is something that conservation has approved on other, has required on other similar projects where corrals and um, facilities are within 100 feet of a wetland. Uh, and the second waiver we're requesting is to allow a reduction from 100 to 50 feet to the house on the subject property. So, and the justification for that is that the nearest house on any abutting property is 250 feet away. So, and the portion of the house where we're seeking the relief is only the garage, which is unfinished space. Um, so other than that, it does meet all the requirements. Um, for, for two horses, you need 50,000 square feet of land, which this property has five and a half acres, so much more than that. And the facility will be of durable, durable construction and maintained in, in accordance with your regs. Um, the property owner also submitted a detailed stable management plan. Um, as far as manure, uh, they're gonna, they'll do work daily to keep the barn and the paddock clean. Uh, the stalls will be mucked daily. The water buckets will be emptied and refilled each day. Uh, the aisle and the barn will be swept. The paddocks will be cleaned with a pitchfork and a bucket. And then all that manure and waste will be stored in 20 gallon covered trash cans, which they uh, plan to donate to Holly Hill, uh, where it will be composted. For vector management, um, they're gonna rely on regular cleaning and keeping the grain in enclosed 20 gallon barrels. Uh, the horses will be kept, uh, can be kept inside at night with the doors of the barn open, and then there'll be strong chicken wire to allow ventilation. As far as predator management, uh, the horses will be, um, you know, contained within the paddock or the barn, and they will have ac access to, to the stalls during the day, so they can go back into the stall if they were frightened or if it's bad weather. And at night, again, the um, the barn can be locked. And uh, lastly, noise management. This property is, you know, it's set back at the end of, of a retreat lot. Um, there aren't any immediate neighbors, and horses are all, are naturally really not that loud. So we really don't expect any um, issues with noise with this. And with that, I would be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, any initial questions from members of the board before we see if there are others that would like to comment? Not for me. So no, I'm okay with it. So I'm, so I'm just looking at the, um, so a hundred feet though, from the edge of the corral goes actually to the other side of the dwelling, right? So the, the, the basically 50 feet, how wide is that garage there that you said the uninhabited garage you said? Yeah, it's probably, it's probably about 24 feet wide. No, it's like 70. So really it's like 75 feet from a, the, from the red, from the living space. Is that correct? It? Yeah. And the barn it's and the barn itself is outside the hundred foot. It is. Yes. Yep. Okay. Robin, did you have, have a question? No, it's fairly straightforward. Meets okay, great. all of our uh, requirements. So do we have anyone here that would like to comment otherwise? Um. Hi. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, could you tell us who you are and where you live? Absolutely. William Eads uh, from Toronto, Joe Morgan. I represent the uh, abutters to the direct south, uh, or I should say, they're not the, the direct abutters. There is that intervening conservation land uh, at 29 Cedar Street. Sorry, my butter, my clients are 29 Cedar Street. That was there. Um, I believe you received our letter. Um, my clients just wanted to express their concern that, you know, if there are horses roaming this property, that they could get onto their property and that they wanted to make sure that this was permitted in uh, compliance with all your freshly updated regulations. 
uh, as to noise and nuisance. And um, the one item I didn't mention in the letter, uh, you know, we're obviously somewhat concerned about the uh, proximity of the corral and therefore the manure to the wetlands. Um, I'm not a hundred percent. I don't know. I obviously haven't looked at the wetland lines in more detail than are presented in this plan, but those wetlands do seem to carry on towards our client, my client's property, and they're concerned about uh, infiltration from the manure and other item, other you know debris left by the horses into the wetlands that might travel towards their property. That's about it. Thank you. Um, can I maybe turn to the uh, the property owner to talk a little bit about the uh, are the horses going to be out of the corral and roaming the property, or is this going to be in the corral the whole time? Is that the? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. This is Chris Condrat from Seventy Four Forest Ave. Um, the, the the goal of these horses is just for um, household pets, um, so they they will be in the corral at all times. Okay, so it's it's unlikely that they would make it all the way across the yard there and into the, the butters. That's, That's right. that would be the concern I would have. Um, and I wonder if if any if uh, Mr. Hassett, if you might comment a little bit about the the question about manure um, and the wetlands. So what's yeah, the what was... risk to a butters with respect to that? Yeah, sure. So the manure is going to be picked up daily and put put in covered trash cans. And those trash cans can be stored outside of the, the 100 foot wetland buffer. And again, they'll be covered though. So, you know, it'll be fully contained. And then event, and then when those buckets are full, it is going to be going to be disposed of off site. Okay. One thing I might add, um, our boards heard um, a request for an animal permit on another property in Forest Ave, I'm not even sure, it might have been about a year ago, and they had a very long protracted time going through CONCOM, and ultimately they did have them put in a stormwater management, like catch basin system almost, where you're talking about putting in a berm, so be prepared, you might have to do something very similar, and then that would, I think, address the problems you're discussing, Mr. Eads, so... This plan may change by the time we get through CONCOM and, and be a little bit more protective of wetlands. Okay, sure. Yeah, we'll definitely work with conservation. If they want something a little more elaborate, we can do that. Yeah, I, I found them to be um, very attentive to the wetland regulations. So if, if anyone's going to ask the hard questions, it will be the Conservation Commission. Sure. So, okay. Great. Other comments? Anyone else on the line that has not? I don't see anyone else. Um, so, uh, Robin um, or Elizabeth, any any comments or questions? Otherwise, um, you know where where you stand in terms of these variances. Um, I, I am willing to make a motion to approve the reduction from wetland setback, um, knowing that it's going to go to conservation. Concom and have a much more detailed look at uh, stormwater impacts. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion to a seconded motion to allow reduction from 100 foot to 50 foot between the facility and the wetland, contingent upon the Coasset uh, Conservation Commission. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries three nothing. All right. Thank you, everyone. Got one more. Over waivers. One more motion. Hey, yep, we got a second one. Um, and I, I'll take it. So I'll, I'll make a motion to allow a reduction from 100 feet to 50 feet between the facility and the dwelling on the subject property. Second. Oh, we have seconds and thirds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Motion carries through nothing. Great. Good luck with Concom. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, and Mr. Mr. Eads, um, that thank you for for to your uh, to your clients for bringing that the questions forward. Um, 
I, I think that we felt that the 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 uh, the concerns are going to be well addressed either between what we what we heard tonight and also conservation. So we appreciate them bringing that to us. Understood. We appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Okay. I need to get back to my agenda. Okay. What do we have left here? Um, oh, so Mary, anything you'd like to add to your weekly reports? Um, no, no. The only thing that's coming up is the end of the public health emergency, which is going to end uh, officially on May 11th. So that really won't have a lot of bearing on us. Um, one thing that we know will change is that there won't be any more free tests. So hopefully the insurances will uh, agree to pay for those. We don't haven't gotten anything definitive on that yet. Um, the other thing is the state will continue to provide COVID vaccine through the end of um, August. So we're not really sure what that's going to mean for the fall and um, COVID vaccine. Um, the one thing we have been told is that if we have to purchase it, it's going to be about 100 to $125 a dose. So that would be a pretty heavy lift for the town, um, even though we would buy it and then bill for it. So we would get reimbursed, but just something to think about as we go forward. So are there other vaccines that, you know, usually vaccines are covered whenever you go fully covered when you go to your, your, your you know, primary care physician or whatnot. Does that carry forward to the town? Like could, could, if, if instead of going, going to the physician, do you think that like, can the town essentially ask the insurance companies to, to cover that cost? Well, the issue, and we will, we'll bill for it, but the issue is buying it up front. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it may, that would be the, the hard piece to figure out. So um, it just may mean we'd get a very small amount of vaccine uh, or you leave it to the pharmacies who have money to buy that up front and then, you know, get reimbursed. So we'll see. Well, They're also trying to work with the vaccine companies to get that price down. Um, and it's apparently this is much more than what the federal government paid. So. Well, we'll based see. upon the vote on the rebuilding of town hall last night at the town meeting, there, there will be money available. Yeah, we'll see. But other than that, that's pretty much all I have. Good, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Um, so that's the last of our agenda items. Um, I'll take the chair's prerogative and um, say thank you to everyone. This is for speaking for myself. Um, uh, I've been on the board for five years. It's been a real uh, privilege. I've enjoyed it very much. I've learned more about septic systems than I ever thought possible. <laughs> Uh, and uh, stables and such. Um, and it's been really, um, you know, Pam, you've prepped us so well um, and you sort of steer us along the way and it's it, it's been um, very helpful. And Mary, I, I will say, I said it once and I'll say it again, you were right about COVID in January of 2020 when you were telling us <laughs> we to go get, make sure people had thermometers and uh, masks. And it's like, oh, come on now. You're right. I really, I really didn't know what I was talking about. You did. <laughs> Actually, it was February, it was February 2020 when we yeah. first showed yeah. us here in yeah. Colossus, as I recall. Yeah. Is that correct? February. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mary, it was yeah. Mary, Mary was Mary was calling it. She was like, "Yeah, I think this is going to be something." So, yeah. we'll well, I, I, I'd like to uh, address the staff and uh, the other two elected members. It's been my pleasure to serve with such fine people, and uh, and I enjoyed it, and I hope I contributed, and I will miss miss you all, and. And to you, Elizabeth, second time around, good luck as you take the chair <laughs> next, minute, next month. Uh, th thank you, Robert. It's been a true pleasure working with you all these years. Oh, yeah, good. thank you both very much. I mean, you know, it couldn't have been more difficult too than going through the pandemic. And, uh, and Michael, I'll never forget that meeting that just went on like past midnight and you just like kept taking it and taking it and taking it with all those school people. That was amazing. So 
can't thank you enough for that. That was awesome. And above and like, above and beyond like, Call of Duty. <laughs> I'd just like to say um, thank you for your support. You know, it's been a rough couple of years and um, we see Pam and I and Amy see what other, how other boards treat their staff and no one compares to this board. So thank you. It's terrific. Yeah, well, we're grateful you for all you're doing. Very, very much. Michael, uh, it's been a pleasure working with you as well. One, one quick year, one month in a flash, but yep. it's been very good and lovely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, likewise. And, and Amy, thanks for all you do. Um, you are always on top of it. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so now, now uh, so I would like to entertain a motion for adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I guess I can make the last motion. Yes. Okay. Very good, Rob. And I will second I that motion. We adjourn the meeting. <laughs> I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries three nothing. Thank you all. Again. Thank you, Thank you. Well, guys. Hope Aye. we see you around, Aye. Rob. Good luck. Bye now. Bye. Bye bye.